Well, hello everyone. I guess what I will do is just go right to the slideshow that I have uh, produced and then we will have, as Erwin said, to have questions answered at the end. So I have to share my screen. It's not easy being a loon, as you will find out. The loons of Lowell Lake. Well, we have a pair of loons. And they've been at the lake for a few years. And last year was the first time they nested. And this year, the, the last year, the chicks lasted one whole week. And they had died either by uh, waves, by snapping turtles. We, we, we don't know how what happened to them. But this year, we have a fighting chance. Uh, but the common loons, it's called a gavia immer. It's a large diving bird with a round head and really powerful bill. They have long bodies and short tails that are not usually visible. You can see it's right at the, obviously at the tail end, but it's really short, short little tail. And they are 26 at 35.8 inches long. They weigh 5.5 to 13.45 pounds. Wingspan of 40.9 to 51.6 inches. And we do get to see them in their beautiful black and white. They don't stay black and white. You'll see that they do change as the fall comes. In, in the winter time, they don't look this beautiful. Have you heard them? The whales. That's the haunting low to high notes. Looking for their mate and looking for the chicks. Beautiful sound to hear on the lake. And then the yodels. It's interesting that only the males make this noise. The older males have an increased rate of yodeling as they age. And this telling you that there's uh, an intruder coming in or predators nearby or people are getting too close to them or their loon chicks or their nest or when the helicopter goes by I've heard them yodel and then these cute hoots how they talk to each other and while they're bringing food the the loon will come in with the fish in its beak and its bill and it will be hooting to let the chick know that their food is coming and sometimes i've also heard them when the uh their rival loons are, the intruders are around. They hoot a lot then too. And then you have the tremolo. They're noisy little guys. So response to threats and Intruding loons, humans, eagles, again, helicopters, and they also do it in flight. Not all the time, but I did, I'm curious why sometimes they tremolo when they fly and other times they don't. I have to find that out sometime. Or as they will do it with uh, their partner. Or after the intruders leave the lake, I've heard uh, the pair, the parents, one yodels, the other tremolos, uh, telling the chicks that all is clear, you can come out now because they've been hiding. When the intruders are around, they'll hide along the 
the banks, the, the edge. And here's a loon on a nest. And this was last year when we were putting out the signs. When we see a nesting loon, we get the loon nesting signs out so people don't get too close. So mid May to late June is when the loons mate and nest. Incubation period is 28 days. The earliest age of a loon nesting is three years old. And the average age is six to seven years old. Loons will nest in marshes along the shorelines or on the artificial nesting rafts. And the threats there are to the nest is flooding, especially in reservoirs. Uh, predation, those predators, lack of habitat, and the high risk sites are lakes that have a lot of boat traffic or disturbances, shoreline activity, and if a lot of building going on. And these are our loons at, from Lowell Lake right on the nest. You can see it's only, it's just right there on the edge of the water, six to eight inches away. And this upper left one, the first nest site last year, that's when I, I was so excited I saw a loon on the nest. And apparently it wasn't a good one because by the time I got this, some help with the signs with Jason, uh, the loon wasn't there anymore. We went around the lake, we couldn't find anything, so we just put the signs back. And the next day I went out and I found the loon on the nest. But they have a very pretty site there with the, with the flowers there. It's a very pretty spot. So what's so good about Lowell Lake? We all know. It's just big enough, 109 acres, surface acres on the lake. If any, if 100 acres is usually the minimum size to have a pair of loons. And we can only get one pair of loons on this lake. Otherwise, they'll be fighting even more than they're fighting now. And loons need a lot of space to take off because they're so heavy due to their solid bones. They need a long runway. It's fun to watch them run across the surface of the water before they finally get up and going. Uh, our water is nice and clean and clear. I did a clarity test yesterday, and I could see 4.8 meters down into the water. Here's a good supply of fish, insects, fish, pH levels good, no big motor boats going fast, and lots of natural shoreline. That's just what the loons like. Oh, there's a picture of the loon running, taking off. So what are the loons natural predators? Eagles, snapping turtles, osprey hawks, intruder loons, raccoons, otters, ravens, mink, fox. And what else can happen? The predators could also get the eggs, if not the chicks, if not the loons. Uh, eggs can fall into the water. The eggs can cool off when the nest is, uh, the eggs not being incubated by the parent. If the parent leaves the nest for too long. And why would the parent leave the nest? It gets too hot. The black flies, intruder loons, abandonment. And then the, the, uh, the egg won't hatch if it's not incubated. Uh, the lead fishing sinkers. I don't want to lose it. Loons can die from lead poisoning after ingesting those. 
uh, fishing line can get caught up on this on on the uh, loons and then won't be able to eat or move. You can see this picture that my friend Nikki Steele, who's in the audience, has taken. This is uh, a loon from Lake Raponda, and it got caught up in some fishing line. Uh, fish hooks can rupture the insides if they swallow them. The flooding, mercury, lack of habitat, waves, boat traffic, nearby shoreline activity, climate change, contaminants. This is why it's not easy being a loon. There's a lot out there for, for getting in the way. I got this from the Vermont Center of Eco Studies, the common loon mortality, 1991 to 2015. Just interesting. Uh, looks like fishing gear that lead that lead poisoning was uh, a big deal with the loons. So glad that Vermont has outlawed it. Monofilament trauma unknown trauma boat hit attacked by other loons. The predators the infection being iced in gunshot. And aspergillosis, I don't know what that is. The disease that they get. Um, these are some a summary of live loon rescues in Vermont from 1998 to 2016. They get stuck in the ice, road crashing. Again, they need a lot of space, landing on too small of a pond. I know they've landed in uh little snow making ponds and things they just can't get out again getting caught in the monofilament or they eat it the monofilament do they mate for life have you heard that but they don't they don't mate for life <clears throat> they stay with the territory they like the territory if the mate leaves, he gets uh, run off or dies or doesn't come back, the existing loon will stay and get another mate. And they will use the same nesting site if it's the female that goes. The male's the one who picks the the site, the nesting site. And so if the male uh, leaves one way or another, if the male does not come back, then a new male will come in and they will find a new nesting site. And what about those cute chicks? So here's just uh, what to look for. We there's so little. Uh, they're covered in dark downy feathers with white bellies. They can swim right after hatching. You can see these guys. They were uh, they were only a day old, or not even. The one guy was a day old. The other one was born that day, and they're already swimming. Um, and they hop up on the back of the parent. The legs and feet grow, spend more time in the water. Two weeks, they molt to a second lighter brown. They can swim underwater up to 50 feet. Parents start to leave them alone for a little while, so as they go dive off of food. At three weeks, their bodies and bills begin to get longer. The juvenile feathers begin to develop on the white bellies. At four weeks, the juvenile primary feathers begin to grow, and they're getting too big to ride on the parent's back. Uh, five weeks, the contour feathers begin to develop. They can capture small prey for themselves, but mainly take food from parents. Six to seven weeks, their plumage continues to develop 
the adults begin to leave the kids for longer intervals at time. They say one parent remains aware of chick's location and watches for danger, but I'm not too sure about that. I've seen them leave them for three hours and while they got the intruder loons out there to deal with. Uh, our chick now is eight weeks old. So growth of legs, feet, and head are beginning to slow down. The feathers, juvenile feathers have fully developed, enabling chicks to compress the air out of the feathers to dive efficiently. Chicks can forage for themselves and capture about 50% of their daily food. They start to exercise their wings to prepare for flight. And then 10 to 11 weeks, we're gonna start seeing the flying lessons which will be a lot of fun. And they capture 90 to 100% of their own food, but they still beg more from their parents. One parent will leave for the ocean while the other stays with the chick until they reach the fledging age. At 12 weeks, independence and fledging age, they start taking test flights. They eat fish, similar size to adults. The second parent can migrate to the ocean, leaving the chick behind. And then they spend, the chicks typically leave their lakes one to three weeks after their parents. And the adults will undergo a partial molt in the late fall and will start looking like a big chick or a one to two year old sub adult, gray and white. And when do the loons return to their natal areas and start looking for territories? The males will come back from the ocean when they're three to four years old, because they winter in the ocean. And they come back when they're three to four years old. They start breeding when they're five to seven years old. Females come back when they're four to six years old. And they start breeding when they're about seven or eight years old. And here's a video the newborns going for a swim. Sorry, my focus was a little wonky since I'm sitting in a kayak. You can hear their little chirping. So here's the breakdown again of the, the chicks growing, riding on the parent's back, going two weeks, uh, going to a lighter brown. There's a parent feeding. At three weeks, they're getting bigger, and the parents don't really don't want them on the backs as much, so they're tethering. And you see that little guy, he's got his head under the wing, of the parent, but he's floating there. <laughs> it took me a long time to figure out how in the world he gets his head, because it looks like his head is in the water, but it's not, it's under the wing. Three weeks, those feathers begin to develop, and four weeks, primary feathers, they're coming in and here the two diving for safety. When the parents go find the intruders, these guys get really low into the water and then they go diving off to the edge of one of the lake, um, one of the islands to hide. They can capture small prey on their own, but they mainly take food from the parents. There's a little guy stretching his leg, his leg out. Contour feathers begin to develop. They're coming along. Six weeks, more diving, trying to catch their own fish now with parent assistance. But the parent would come along with a fish as a feeding 
will drop the fish into the water so the chick has to go down and get it. And you can see the necklace on this underneath the chin of the chick. And they're getting the red eye. <laughs> And stretching the wings. This guy's yawning because he's tired, waiting for the intruders to leave. Will the loons come back to Lowell Lake? On average, they come back 70 to 80% of the time. If only one comes back, either the partner died or moved to a different lake or was evicted. And how does a loon find a spot in a territory? Well, they got to fight for it. Finding a spot in an unoccupied lake, 38%, usually younger in the older males. Passive replacement of a breeder that has disappeared. So coming in, trying to uh, mate with a loon that's left. And then the eviction of an established territory taking over 36%. Uh, here's another video of uh, the preening <laughs> lessons. They're trying to get where they have an oil gland in the back by the tail. And they have to spread that around and they're trying to zip the feathers so they're all closed up so that water doesn't go in. If they keep them dry, the skin dry. You can see how far back the legs are. Why they can't go running on land. Their feet and their legs are too far back. And then here's a little guy doing it. <laughs> Learning how to preen. Where do our Vermont loons migrate to? Where do they go in the fall? So they go along the, the ocean on the east. Uh, they had tracked, at one point I had asked uh, Eric Hansen of Vermont Eco Studies. I said, well, where do ours go? And he said that when he had tracked some, the male went to New Hampshire coast. The female went down to Cape Cod. So they don't go together, the, the pairs. They come back and will pair up again at Lowell Lake. But in the meantime, they go to the ocean and uh, eat the flounder and crabs and lobster and shrimp. And the, Adults have a complete molt in late winter replacing their flight feathers, which means that they're flightless for a period before the spring migration. Their eyes fade to a brown color for the winter. Uh, the loons group up in rafts to fill up on fish on a non-breeding lake before they head out. Fun facts, the loon's closest relatives are penguins and pelicans. 
Loons fly about 70 miles per hour. They can travel 670 miles within 24 hours. And I looked up, it's only 218 miles to Cape Cod. They can live more than 30 years. They weigh about 10 pounds. They eat two pounds of fish each day. They have a special gland behind their eyes that pushes the salt water out and down their bill when they're on the ocean. They can dive 180 feet deep. They have a nictitating membrane that covers the eyes that act as goggles for diving into the water. And they can have two to four territories in their lifetime. And they will slap a fish on the water to stun them before eating them so they don't wiggle all around. What can I do? What can you do? Report any loon incidents to the fish and game warden. Throw away any loose fishing line. Don't leave it on the shore. Pull in your lines if loons are fishing nearby. Don't use lead sinkers. They're illegal in Vermont, anywho. Give loons enough space. Don't crowd them. Don't feed the loons and donate to the Vermont Center for Eco Studies. What about the nearby lakes? I just wanted to, people have seen and heard loons over at Gale Meadows. Are they nesting there? No, they're not, not yet. Is it too many bald eagles? Is it too many stumps and weeds? Or this could be their staging area. I haven't figured it out yet. It seems like there could be some nice places to put a nest, but they don't seem to. At Somerset Reservoir has four pairs of loons nesting there. This year they've produced two chicks, but now there's four, no more. There were two, uh, I can't, you guys are in my way here. I can't read that. Uh, when I was there last, there was still another loon on the nest, but with an update, there were two chicks hatched. When we went there, uh, we counted 11 loons total, four pairs, two chicks, one singleton adult, but now there's two more chicks. So four pair, four chicks, one singleton adult, if everybody is still there. At Branch Pond, we counted three loons one pair with a chick. At Wentasticut Pond, there's two to four loons, no chicks. A tree fell over the nest this year. There was a lightning, struck a tree, it fell down onto the nest, and the, there was an egg there. Uh, but the loon never went back, even after they cleared the branches. And <laughs> so these are funny looking chicks. That's because mallard duckling in a uh, gold, golden eye. This was just a funny story last year that these loons had lost their chick. The mallard had lost its family and the loons adopted the duckling. And it taught it to dive, and it taught it to eat fish. <laughs> it's pretty amazing how big he got, and he's still going back on the back of the loon. And then here's this other little one, little golden eye. <laughs> and before I say the end here, I just want to let an update of our chicks because. Last week on Friday, one of the intruder loons killed one of our chicks. So we are down to one chick now, who is now eight weeks old. But thanks for coming and learning a little bit more about loons. These are uh, some websites that I use to get some more information. And if you want to have some more information yourselves.
And I'm going to stop my share. So, do we have any questions? You're going to have to unmute your. Hi, hi, Jane. This is Bob and Claudia. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for doing this. It's awesome. Yeah, really I, lovely. We are uh, big lovers of loons, and we've traveled all over up north and New Hampshire and Maine and stuff to uh, follow loons and go camping. It's always fun. So I have a question about where, how do the babies know where to go? Because they're, they're usually last to leave the, the lakes, correct? Yeah, uh, good question. Go? Just like, um, yeah, it must be uh, instinct on their part. And just, the males still go to this, where the males go and the female chick or you know, baby goes where the females go? No, oh, no, I think, uh, I'm not sure where, if it's all male, female, it's just uh, the one pair that Eric had exactly. tracked. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Interesting. Where they go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever floats their boat, I guess. I uh, yeah. <laughs> or floats their little bones. <laughs> All right. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. You're welcome. That was great. Hey, Jane, yeah. how, when will they leave, do you think? Where? Oh, wait. When, when will they leave? When do they leave? Well, uh, they will leave in the fall before it, it ices over. So we don't know exactly when. No, they, di they didn't give me their itinerary. They didn't. Thank you. Thanks for all your information. You're welcome, Peggy. <laughs> I wanted the question, is it this hard for like all water life animals or, it just, or is it like it just loons and specifically? Is it just for like loons specifically? Ah, well, I'm sure other animals have a tough time too. I just been looking at these loons and seeing what they have to go through. I get it. other animals also have to watch out for predators, right? Yeah, but I feel like it like the poor loons have so much to do, like the babies and the predators. I feel like the universe just like has it in for them to make it hard. <laughs> yeah, but, it can be hard. Price to pay. So so beautiful, there's a price to pay. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Can, I, can an adult loon defend itself against a predator loon? Yes, they can have some fights. So they, they get to that stage, they've got a chance. Right, right. They do have a chance and, and they will fight. They will, their wings are very powerful and they'll try hitting each other and they will grab each other's beaks. And they, I was reading that um, one grabbed a hold of the beak of the other, or the bill, and pushed them underwater mm. so it, wow. it would drown. It's like, and their beaks are very, their bills are very powerful that they can stab. So that, you know, they're diving underwater. They, that's why the loons are all looking under the water because they don't want one of the diving loons to come up and uh, dagger them. Oh. And it would, it would interfere with them if the babies and the parents were somehow caged into a bigger area so the predators couldn't get them until the babies got bigger. So, well, they, they, the babies always sent to they the babies know that they have to go hide okay and they're very good at hiding okay <laughs> sometimes it takes like little children <laughs> 45 minutes to find one <laughs> but they do they you know they flatten out and they go right to the shoreline and it's really hard to find them they're a little they they look yeah. like a little 
ball of fluff. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Jane, I have a question. This is Dodie. How long does the loon spend underwater? How long can they submerge? Oh, that's, I knew that at one time. I'm not sure. They, um, they can go for... We're not muted yet. Uh, I, I don't know if it's a minute or, or. Jane? Yeah. Nikki, you know. <laughs> I do Thank know this you. one. <laughs> I think they can go up for four minutes. It's usually, minutes. it's usually one or two minutes. Oh, okay. Um, okay. but they can go under for an incredible long it's, time. It's a long time. I mean, yeah. Eleanor, Eleanor and I were out kayaking on, um, Tuesday. And at Lowell Lake, and we saw the, I think it was the mom and the chick, which was really big. I mean, the chick is really good size now. I was surprised that they were, you know, brown and white. I was used to the, you know, the black and white, and they popped up right next to us. But I, I guess my other question is, when they're that large, and they're right near the mom, how do they defend themselves if there's someone, you know, a predator coming in there to attack them? Well, they go that high. And they can't fly. Right. So they go hide. Wow. And they die. Jane. He's good at diving now. Okay. Good. Jane. Yes. Uh, it's Barb Wells. Um, what's the best time? What's the best time to be on Lowell Lake during the day? <laughs> to, have, to have a chance of seeing the loons. Well, you'll always see the loons, but if I've been going in the mornings anywhere between seven and nine mm -hmm. that I usually arrive there. And the intruders are there most of the time. So if that's the case, then there's, you'll see four adults, four or five adults, <laughs> loons on one side of the lake. And then you have to go around and try to find the chick. <laughs> The chick will be hiding somewhere. <laughs> Hi, Jane. It's Gail. Um, I've been amazed how friendly they are. I mean, I don't even try to look for them, and they just show up next to the kayak. It, well, that's like 11 to noon, like I've been out there. In fact, the other day, they kept following me. I was like, well, this is great. But I also worried. I worried that, you know, is that... Yeah, they're getting not, too used to us. To it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's a great thing, but right. uh, and they were coming like right up next to me, <laughs> looking at me. I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay, loved it, but yeah, I was yeah, concerned. I was Loved concerned. it. Yeah. yeah, as long as you, you know, if they come to you, there's not much you can do, you know, except for try to get yeah. away. Get away. Right. Poor things. <laughs> oh, but they're so fun. They're fun. They're fun. Yeah. No, oh, they're beautiful. I have a question. Um, I was wondering, like, so I'm I'm going to Vermont for college in the fall, and I was oh just, yay! Yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> um, and I was wondering if there was like a way to get involved with like loons somehow, like well, go to Vermont Eco Studies. Okay. And uh, you can ask them there. They're sure they would be happy to find something for you to do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for loving loons. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for everything you're doing. Ah, well, I'm enjoying it. Great pictures. It was really enjoyable. I learned a lot. That was great. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. You're fantastic, Jane. Yay! Yeah. Thank, you, Jane. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you all. You're welcome. All right, then. I guess we'll wrap it up. So thank you very much, Jane, and thank you to all of you who joined us tonight. And uh, we look forward to some more of our presentations here on Zoom. But uh, thanks for joining us again. Great. You know, and thank you, Erwin, because between this and the pollinators, great way for just Rather than watching a movie or news, for sure, this is wonderful. Right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Jane. It's great. Welcome.
Oh, there's Vinny and Lyle. Oh my God. Thanks again. Oh, the crew here. <laughs> in the neighborhood. <laughs> hey, thanks, Jane. I'll, I'll see you out on the lake. <laughs> okay. I, I can't wait to hear. Yeah. What I'll thanks, email you my results tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Nikki. All right. So long, everybody. Oh, bye. -bye. Good job.